and end terms will become equal I L will be these are even so I will write 2 L double factorial for this one because the terms will become here 6 4 2 then means that I4 term will be 8 by 9 so I can write 2 L because L will be 1 so I will have 2 double factorial then L will be equal to 2 and L will be equal to 3 and so on divided by 2 L plus 1 1 is being added with this so 2 L double factorial by 2 L plus 1 double factorial now I can write this one this is equal to if I expand this 2L double factorial then I know that when we have we have n factorial here n double factorial I can also write is n factorial divided by n minus 1 double factorial so put the value 2l plus 1 I am expanding this one so this will be then equal according to this expression if I write for n 2l plus 1 and double factorial then this is equal to 2L plus 1 factorial so 2L plus 1 factorial divided by 2L plus 1 and minus 1 so 1 1 will cancel and we will have 2L double factorial so if for 2L double factorial I put that value then I will get 2L double factorial this one and then this 2L double factorial will go up so from here means they are actually the double factorials and due to the double factorial 6, 4, 2, 2 and so on so I can write that this is 2L double factorial by 2L plus 1 double factorial as they are plus 1 to them and this 2 I am multiplying as this 2 is coming with them here I can write that if I expand this 2L plus 1 double factorial here then any double factorial I can write is single factorial by n minus 1 double factorial so for n i can write 2l plus 1 and double factorial and this is then equal according to this 2l plus 1 single factorial then 2l plus 1 minus 1 so 1 and minus 1 will cancel and we will have 2L double factorial so if for 2L double plus 1 double factorial I put this value here then the 2L plus 1 double factorial will come up and 2L plus 1 single factorial will be here so I can write this 2L double factorial and 2L double factorial is 2L double factorial whole square by 2L plus 1 factorial and multiplied by 2 now there is another relation and that relation is that if there is any number positive number k integer number k and the k is this n is actually equal to 2 times k if n is 2 times k is we are having this 2l and we take double factorial of it then I can write this is 2 to the power k and k factorial so here is we are equal to 2l 
So I can write according to this relation 2 to the power L and L factorial and whole square will come in and 2L plus 1 factorial and 2 will be as it is. So now as PLL was earlier we have calculated that this was equal to 1 over 2L and L factorial whole squared and 2L factorial was there with the PLL and we derived for the last this, this is actually IL, so the IL value is 2L into L factorial whole squared divided by 2L plus 1 factorial and multiplied with 2. So now these some cancellations are there. 2L plus 1 factorial square is gone with this. And now look here. This is 2L plus 1 factorial. And this is 2L factorial. So the next term if I expand this factorial, then this will be 2L plus 1 multiplied with 2L factorial. So 2L factorial will actually, let me explain this one here, that this will be 2L factorial and so this will be 2L plus 1 into 2L factorial multiplied by 2. So we are having cancellation of this one as well and we are left with 2 divided by 2L plus 1. So the PLL, the constant we determined that this is 2 over 2L plus 1. So the normalization therefore 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 the normalization or the normalized basis function is u means this is for PLL so I can write this for the u L of x now this will come the other side because we know that for the normalization P L of L should be equal to 1. So I can write that U L of X will be normalized by the inverse of this in square root. So this will be 2 L plus 1 over 2 square root and P L of X is let me explain again. PL into PL should be equal to 1. Now, this will go the other side. It will become 2L over this. And for single PL, it will become the square root of it. So, we are having this is the normalized polynomial will be equal to 2L plus 1 by 2PL of X. So I can write that the normalization from minus 1 to plus 1 for two polynomials P L of X and P L of X will be equal to, so put here L prime is this will be for the different L values and this will be equal to 2 over 2L plus 1 and delta L L prime. So this is now the normalization. The orthonormality is here. When L will be equal to L prime, then we will have this thing equal to 1 and this will normalize this thing. So we will get as a result 1 here 
and when L will not be equal to L prime, we will get zero here, and this zero will be the orthogonality condition. So this way, we have written our normalized polynomial or the orthonormalized polynomial. So any function, any function f of x I can write is summation on L from 0 to infinity and A L, these are actually the coefficients. The coefficients is we write in quantum mechanics C N. So A L are those coefficient and U L of X and this will be equal to summation on L and AL 2L plus 1 this one by 2 square root and PL of X. So any function I can now expand in terms of the orthonormal polynomials and this we do in quantum mechanics a lot. So the how to find AL. So the coefficient AL, this is the expansion coefficient and this is exactly the same as in quantum mechanics we are having CNs. So this can be found is in inner product with this function. So AL will be equal to UL and with a function F. And this is equal to integral from minus 1 to plus 1 and dx UL of x and F of x and this thing AL is equal to integral from minus 1 to plus 1 and the constant first which will be 2L plus 1 over 2 square root and P L of x P L of x and F of x D x. This is always the same inner product that we have and when we have the coefficients here a else this can be found by considering the inner product of the Legendre polynomials with this and when we say that our Legendre polynomials P L of x are orthonormal are orthonormal then the orthonormal means that they are now behaving like in vector space we know them by unit vectors which are x y z or i j k as we do in uh, vector space so these are also no orthonormal these are orthonormal in vector space we know that in vector space we can write any vector and we can resolve that vector into these unit vectors are orthonormal bases. We can resolve any vector and when I would like to find any of these x and y and z are actually the coefficients. This x is actually like our AL. Now, if I want to find out x, then I will take the, the unit vectors product with this vector r and this will be equal to the coefficient. The same thing here we do like this. Means r is our function, r is our any function and if I want to find out the coefficient then I will have to, the coefficient will be multiplied 
So this is actually our now orthonormal basis like the unit vectors. And this is the function and this function is like our vector. Now if I consider their inner product means the inner product means the dot product here then I will get the coefficient and this coefficient is actually our x, y, z. So we can understand this thing very well by considering the its analogies with the vector space. So this is our coefficient. This is the inner product of the function which is function here and here is the vector. Here is the orthonormal Legender polynomials and here are the orthonormal bases of the vector space. So this way we can write this. So here as we did the two Legender polynomials are being normalized by this constant and then delta L. So this will be now equal to zero if L will not be equal to this. This is the orthogonality condition and it will be equal to 1 if L will be equal to L prime and this one is the normalization condition which is done by finding out this normalization constant which we found here that 2 over 2 L plus 1 is the normalization constant between legendal polynomials and with this we are done with the properties of the legendary polynomials.